Yeah, Bane is very reliant on uh, a somewhat limited mana pool, and he's also a stationary target that's very easy to disable. Long range tornado can catch him out, even if he's in the background. So a lot of cheese left. Mm, a lot of cheese. I mean, Bane's actually pretty good for Huskar, right? Like, if he, if he gets grave, you can just sleep him. If he's low, you can sap him. And people. Yeah. I think it's pretty pretty decent, actually. So maybe less so worried about that than, let's say, the Meepo. If you go for the Huskar Bane, okay. The entire skill set of Bane is just so annoying to play against, regardless of what carry you have. This you does always have to worry. The Dark Seer out in the pool when you already have him into Wyvern for OG. <laughs> Considering the run and which games they've won and which they've lost, I favor the Earth Shaker a lot more than the Dark Seed. You want to see another Moon Shaker? Yeah, I think it's been absolutely brilliant. Sometimes it's one of those things where uh, a player feels so incredibly comfortable and is on such a good tempo run He's with a zone. kind of hero that you would rather pick up that hero that's more preferable to him specifically rather than perhaps an overall strategy win. I think, I think that's what's great about the, the latest patch is that it's relatively balanced in such a way that players can do that and still make a difference. Oh yeah, we've seen that a lot, especially with us analyzing the game. Sometimes we just get into a draft and we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> OG did not ban away the Wind Ranger, Ancient Apparition, and obviously the Ember Spirit were smart bans, but it does leave an opening for Team Secret if they want that in combination with the Slardar. They still have the Winter Wyvern as well as Dazzle, though. They're pretty strong against that single target, so if they leave it out for Team Secret, I think, that, I think it's acceptable, but... Don't they want like an early game fighter right now for an O-Tail, though? Like... PL's already banned out, so maybe Gyro, let's say. Gyro, to... uh, they can also sort of, I don't know. I was about to say Night Stalker, but then you don't have the option of going back to the Earth Shaker. Maybe just picking up the Wind Ranger, sort of pick logging Weeha as well. Hmm. I like Gyro a little bit more. He's he's even more early game than the Wind Ranger. I like the the pressure already out from the laning phase. The thing is, by, by picking the Jaro, oh well, we have seen Miracle play the Jaro as well, so yeah, I think that, that's a possibility, just so they still leave that opening for, exactly, leaving that opening for the Meepo pick, in case they need no tail on it. Hmm. There's still a Brood in the pool as well. Queen of Pain and Wind Ranger, I think, are the two most likely pickups for teams. They, I, they won't pick Queen now, I think they go... OG will just immediately go strong with the Invoker pick, and we'll have a very similar story to the last game. Yeah. So, Queen, I think, is a no-go, at least for third, maybe fourth, but... Well, the difference being that the, uh, the support already for Team Secret is better than they had last time around. Mm -hmm. I still think it's just not a good matchup overall. Yeah, interesting. The uh, Secret of... Or rather, we has played Wind Ranger six times at Frankfurt, only once when Secret had gone for a slaughter. Hmm. I think the Wind Ranger is a, a good pick here. It's not a giveaway of anything. It's not good versus Winter Wyvern, though. Yeah, it's it's actually bad versus the two supports, but yeah. it's very strong versus the core Gyrocopter when you have Slardar on you. It's just the early physical damage mm. that is really threatening to a Gyrocopter. Mm -hmm. But OG are so good at playing together as a team that if he can rely on his Winter Wyvern and Dazzle, I think OG would still be fine. Hmm. They do go for the Queen of Pain. This can be a eternal enemy Queen of Pain, though. It's not a death give giveaway for the for the mid lane. And I think if there's one thing they've learned, it's that they need to fight early on. They want to fight early on. So having eternal enemy playing a, a, a carry position that can help with that is probably more favorable to going for an enter mage again, for instance. I'd still like to see OG pick up the invoker right now. So. Yeah, Ben, when you responded that it would just be an invoker pickup from OG, I was with you. But what if they then pick the uh, Boundary Hunter and puts a lot of pressure on the middle lane early on? I mean, Quaswet's invoker is not really vulnerable to Bounty Hunter ganks, I think. You can just tornado or run away. Yeah, you're not necessarily needing um, a bottle or early pickups yeah. because the Quas regen as well, so... There's still the Alchemist left, too. Team Secret actually left that in the pool for... 
Hmm. Okay. It's a good occasion for Bain well. but generally speaking, I, I'm a bit surprised by this considering how open the pool is, but I guess they just really want to hold Miracle's pick for the last. Potentially meet uh, No-Tails as well, if the Gyrocopter does go on the middling. Or in a carry position. Yeah, considering that Clockwork isn't very good versus Queen of Pain, whereas heroes like Night Stalker are direct counters to her. I am surprised as well. Like, it's Lockdown versus Lardar and Bane, but I think you would rather address Weehaz or potentially Eternal Envy's hero better. And even then, the Earth Shaker pretty much does the same thing that the Clockwork does in terms of dealing with the Bane element. We've got the Alchemist there, the Miracle, potentially. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good brood game, though. Yeah. So what offline would you have preferred over the clockwork? What does the clockwork offer that the other ones didn't? Honestly, I would have preferred them to hold hold the offline pick for the last one. There's so many many good Moon Meander heroes left that there was no rush to do it. I understand why they really want to hold on hold out on the mid lane pick, but I still think it would have held more value of just picking up either the Invoker again, even a Wind Ranger. You could argue that the Clockwork forces fights better than pretty much any other offlaner because mm -hmm. if he hits his hook, mm -hmm. he gets the cogs. Oh, yeah. that you, there's sense. a fight guaranteed, right? And that's what OG want to be able to make sure happens, is that Team Secret aren't able to just dance around and have small skirmishes. They yeah. want full-out fights. Especially with the absence of Tusk. And I definitely agree with that point. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point. Hmm. Tusk was their kind of hero that made sure in that last game that there was always going to be these fights no matter what Team Secret did just because Snowball and Ice Shards controls heroes so well. You can't retreat. Still a Meepo in the pool, can still be picked by either side and fit into their lineup. Wow. Okay, OG removed Invoker. Yeah, I, th I thought it was funny that uh, we were talking about Invoker and Meepo, but the thing is, both of these uh, 8,000 matchmaking points, the players, Weha and Miracle, they, they both exceptionally good on the heroes. So the brood's still there. The alchemist is still there. Is there any other better pick than alchemist? I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. you, like I don't the, you like the Wind Ranger pick? I like the Wind Ranger pick, but reason, like, I'm I'm a cobard run. Yeah, I really don't want to say anything wrong. If this is a miracle pick, which we assume it is, he's played. One win range here at Franklin. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's just not at all as convincing as when we have plays it. These two players, as good as they both are, and, and they're overall on the same level, we have Wind Ranger is just so much better than. It could be like something like Viper too. It could be a Viper. Could Viper's be a not a bad idea. They but did go for the Alchemist. Tried and tested. Team Secret have a swarm of responses though. I think left available. They could go for like the Viper we were talking about. They could go for a mid Razor. They could still have the Queen of Pain mid and then pick up uh, a carry that they feel is going to be able to match the Alchemist's level, for yeah. example, the Animage that we've seen before. Yeah, they must have seen this one coming. The difference being now they've seen how EG lost with the Animage. They themselves just lost with the Animage due to the early game pressure that they felt from OG. So I think there's a lot of fear going into this pick, knowing that they just beat Animage twice. A swark! <laughs> Final pick! And that one's taken a few of us by surprise as we head back to the commentary team for game two. That's right, as game two gets underway, we have to ask ourselves the question, do you believe in the dream that is the run of OG Dota, or do you believe in the power that is Team Secret Cinderin? Yes. Great. Yeah, I believe in the dream that it's OG. But I also believe so strongly that Team Secret are one powerful team. Now they've got wonderful heroes, great maneuverability around the map. The, the Slark we get to see, really uh, so aggressive. Up against the Alchemist, I know you were, you were hoping for the Anti-Mage being probably the best pick up against the, the Alchemist. What do you think of the Slark? I wouldn't say Anti-Mage was the best pick up against teams try to a team like secret in the past has been so good at playing this kind of split push style and this game to me again i think they have the opening especially because this time around it's moonmeander on a clockwork it's not on the shaker it's not on the tusk uh they don't have that good heroes once again to deal with an am 
I'm saying that after I saw EG get beaten by an Alchemist when they played the AM. But to be fair, I thought their draft was good in that game too. They just made some misplays. PPD also tweeted out, we can't win the championship with the n amount of misplays we made in that game. Um, but it's going to be a Slark. So let's talk about Slark. It's a very rare pick these days. Um, the main thing that triggers it here is, of course, the Alchemist. Slark can lay into the Alchemist over time and just steal so many stats and get extremely powerful over the course of team fights. It's a great pick against Clockwork in the sense you can pounce both into and out of COGS. It actually doesn't knock back you when you pounce. So you can get over it. And uh, this is... I mean, the, the panel we're talking about last the last couple of games being a bit pubby. This is one of the classic counterpicks in public games to Alchemists, actually. So that might be the source of inspiration here for Team Secret with Eternal Envy. I think, once again, the drafts are good, and we're just seeing the emphasis OG put on these defensive supports. This time, they first face pick both the Dazzle and the Wyvern. And that's just their style. We'll see if Secret have the solutions for it this time. And it's, it's worthwhile when you have players like Crit, like you were mentioning in the previous game. He just came up with so much money out of nowhere, always there at the right time, at the right place. And Fly's Dazzle play was unbelievable. And they're able to get such a huge advantage because, again, they've done this early movement into the Radiant Jungle. And with the double wards, the funny thing is, though, Pilot Eye might be able to find both of these. This is actually a very standard play from OG to plant down both of these, both Sentry and Observer, in these almost exact positions. This ward that uh, Pilot Eye is now moving towards, just a little bit further to the left. And yeah, he actually reads it perfectly and will take out both of oh, these. Oh, will wards. we be on time? It's close! Oh! No. No camp to spawn. 30 seconds. <laughs> the dream is not real on that front. It's actually interesting that Pied, we rarely, very rarely see this, goes for both sentries before he sees that the camp is actually blocked. But of course, this is a pattern from OG that they have read. <laughs> and I do believe he placed the wards very well here. So it should be all right to hold the camp in 10 seconds. OG will have to mix it up a little bit later. Eternal Envy has got Moon so low. Moon can keep Cog pushing back the Slark, but you'll notice also the build that Envy has gone. And this is only like a level one Slark, but you've got that essence shift. So all he's got to do is just keep walking a little bit closer towards Moon, take out a little bit of it, and then just wait for Puppy to bring in the extra damage. And that's what he brings by going for that early point up in Brain Sap. He's not looking for the Nightmare into Leash combo. He's actually looking just to kill Moon, if possible. A very good Cogs here. The way Clockwork deals with this lane is to drain the mana of Slark. If he can't do that, Eternal Envy is going to take con complete control of the lane, and they've done all right so far. Moon, I think, has played this lane about the best he can. How does, how does Misery approach this game? The last game, it wasn't really terrific for him. The Blink Dagger was delayed for what seems like forever. Now he's been put in the safe lane with a little bit of help from Pylai Dai. Still up against a Gyro as well as a Dazzle, so we can't find kills. Is there any way that Secret can zone out a Dazzle Gyro? The key thing is just to pull. That's the it. fact that the pull is open allows them to very easily just pull the way back. You saw Misery there getting quite a few CS under the tower. You don't want to contest out in the middle of the lane. You'll see Misery won't even try to go for CS. This lane, if he goes for a CS, he can get hit by a Shadow Wave. The Gyrocopter, of course, with the Rocket Barrage will pressure him so hard he has to go back. He's going to buy the boots and just walk back here. And now Pilot Eye with another pull. This one is actually, oh, he got it because it was Nulls, or they're called Vools now. So just why not? He could be Warcraft sent. And there is some uh, some CS here for Misery. Yeah. Gets all three. So far, so good for Secret this time. I think their, their laning is the right one. Uh, the mid lane in particular, Alchemist against Queen of Pain, is a very difficult lane for the Alchemist to begin with. Weeha has definitely taken an aggressive stance on it. It's also very difficult when Miracle doesn't get the room control he's looking for. Eternal Envy and uh, Puppy, it only takes, like, Envy can be left alone on this top lane, so Puppy can rotate down to, rotate down to take care of the top ward. And Pilot Eye is kind of spending most of his time in the Radiant Jungle anyway, so locking down these runes is easy enough. Pilot Eye actually took out the two-minute bounty rune, and that's the critical one Miracle's looking for. Like, regen, double damage, invis, while they all might be wonderful for other heroes, for the Alchemist, you're just looking for the money. And he's just unable to, unable to find it fully yet. We are, should be able to bottle crow and get this back before minute 350, so good timing on that, just getting that extra bottle efficiency. Uh, did I say Miracle? It's Weeha. I might have said we. I'm not sure. Sometimes I get carried away. It's fine, Sid. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, he's going to get that bottle back before minute four. He's kind of idling in base right now. I'm not sure if he's waiting for an item. Okay, he's got his boots as well. So needed a little bit of gold for that. And this four-minute rune is 
Pretty important. I imagine we should see the first blood happening at some sort of rune just because of how much emphasis both teams should be putting on it. Crit can, of course, fly over the cliffside here and contest the rune with Arctic Burn. And if Miracle joins in with his concoction, there's the possibility of a kill. Here's butt. that move again. OG are actually reading the fact they're going to contest for the runes and Pylai die. He's got his own Radiant Observer Ward, so he might see the Gyrocopter behind, but he steals the Bounty Rune, picks up Miracle and throws him away. Miracle is out of range oh, for the nice. stun, but you've still got the Rocket Barrage arriving for no tail. He needs to get a little bit more space. Rocket Barrage again in two seconds time, and that'll be your first blood on the Pylai die. Moves the tree line, but he can't get to the Fog of War in time. So Nurtal makes a very long rotation in order to get that, but still takes the first blood. Great play there from both teams. Nurtal making the read that he should go for that play, and at the same time, Pi, even if he knew that, I don't think he has that much regret. He stole a bounty rune away from the Alchemist. That's a lot of gold that he loses out, and of course some experience. And Weeha was left in the mid, so now he's got level 6. He's still ahead of the Alchemist on both gold oh, and lane. experience. Puppy locked in with Moon inside the cogs, but Eternal Levy jumps to his rescue. Into the middle of the battery, Assault and Moon getting picked off by this top lane. Very difficult to kill off a Bane when he gets so much life back from the Brain Sap. And Miracle's got to be really careful. He doesn't have Chemical Rage. We have got Sonic Wave. And he's definitely considering throwing it out if Miracle comes in a little bit closer. He's just got enough for a Blink Scream. But the Sonic Wave and Scream and Blink together, that's a little bit more difficult. And Miracle now will use Moon to refresh his bottle. So the life comes back to the Alchemist. Yeah, can do this because Crit, of course, is standing in that top lane. They have prioritized Crit a lot in this tournament. Don't really ever sacrifice Crit's levels on this Wyvern. And he needs to be a bit careful himself. This top lane, Envy being harassed. He's close to level 6 though, so this is the last bit of harassment. He might actually from... die. Moon's rotating in through the riverside, looking for the Cogsburn, pushes Envy up and away. He's still got 6 charges of Babel, and now with the Dark Pack, there's a lot of damage going to come into Moon, so Puppy can get the revenge kill here until the Cold Embrace arrives. Puppy, is it worth the nightmare? He'll probably say yes, especially when TP support's coming in from the Slaughter. This is a good hit for Misery. Good money coming his way. Of course, losing your Slark isn't the dream. But this will force a lane rotation, so Slark more than likely will just head to the bottom lane. Great play from OG, though. I think it's totally worth it losing their clockwork to kill the Slark like that. They force a TP, they kill him right before he gets level 6, after which this lane harassment just isn't that effective anymore when Slark, of course, gets that ultimate. Interesting build here from Eternal Envy going phase boots first. I think this has got to be something that uh, happens in like 5% of Slark games. Miracle? Weeha as well as Puppy's right next to him. They're contesting this stack with the Chemical Rage. Weeha knows he can't find the kill. But he at least makes it very difficult for Miracle to get this huge injection of money. But he's only got a level 1 Grievous Greed. This reminds me of Eternal Envy's Weaver build with Phase Boots. I, I'm trying to think of any <laughs> other player that would go face first on Slark, and no one comes to mind out of all, all the games I've seen top lane. Yeah, he's gonna uh, be fine. Perfect crush and sprint away. And with the Amplification Moon, is definitely not going to chase in. Okay, Pilot up. Definitely just saw that ward placement go down too. I'm wondering why he's getting the phase boots, what the advantage is. There's nothing he really needs to phase through. The attack speed is very well, good for stealing more stats. Oh, he's going to go on fly here, catching up nicely with the phase boots. Yep. Well, yeah. this is the way Envy likes to play. You talk about that Weaver build with the phase boots. What Envy used to do is just dive in so deep fly, will actually shallow grave himself up. And Envy, not 100% sure where he wants to go, but he'll come back down. He's got actually the Rubik to come in. Pylai die, kill securing with a pounce away. Eternal Envy will run out to safety. But this is exactly what Envy did with the Weaver face boots. He'll dive underneath the tier one tower. When you're on a Weaver, of course, you time lapse yourself back out to safety. So with the help of the Rubik, he's able to do that with the Slark. It is a good hero for diving just because of, even if you get counterplayed, this hero can just pounce into the trees. And over the time it takes the enemy team to find you, you might have healed 200 or 300 health. Okay, 1.48%. That's a miracle. What do you do? Mango, hookshot comes down. Moon only goes on top of Miracle, but he will still lock Misery inside the cogs and with fly here. Misery just wants to escape. He's got crush off cooldown in one second time. He might buy the space. No, he doesn't. Miracle will find the kill. Three heroes committed for this one. And it was actually Slaughter who stole the regeneration rune. So the bounty still goes the way of the Rubik. And they're rotating in with the smoke. So Puppy, he could start with the Nightmare, Pilot Eye. Oh, they blink, scream, Telekinesis will hold Miracle in position for now. Puppy's still on the front line, actually Nightmare's on fly. So it ensures the kill. No, the Sonic Wave wakes him up from his slumber. It won't matter anyway, the Alchemist had enough regeneration. 
Even with the Shadow Strike, he won't drop low enough. I actually think they would have killed Miracle if the Sonic Wave didn't hit Dazzle. This is a level 2 Nightmare, so it lasts for a whole 5 seconds, and he got woken up after 3. And they just needed one more attack on the Alchemist, but the moment he saw that it woke up the, uh, the Fly Dazzle, he knew that kill wasn't going to happen, so... Sometimes it's bad that your spell got buffed a lot a while ago and it's a better area. Oh. Sonic Wave does have a huge radius. No tell, battling up against Misery. Misery's got a little bit of help coming in as they trigger another map. This time it's going to be Moomba Puppy. Well, he's got Moon chasing him down. Going for the Nightmare, maybe not possible. As now he'll brain tap out one. Nightmare's not enough time. The call down arrives from the Gyrocopter. And Moon keeps him controlled with the Battery Assault. But that's to get another hookshot being used where Moon finds a kill off the back of it. Or at least a, an assist. How many times has he played Clockwork in this tournament? It, I feel like it's very, very I think, few I think games. Red said he only got one game in the, okay. on the Clockwork. It's just interesting to see him just switch over to a, a completely different hero from what we've seen pretty much the entire tournament. And just, once again, just he's making the right moves. He's, I think one thing that really defines Moon Meander in this tournament is his game sense. He's very good at being in the right place at the right time. Uh, predicting movement from the enemy team and striking when it's necessary. In this game, he's 1-2-2. Two, and two. It doesn't sound that great, but considering what lane matchup he had, he's got everything he was supposed to. Okay, I can actually answer it. He's never played Clockwork in the, in the Frankfurt Major. Just right. double-checked. Movement coming from Team Secret. Misery and Pile I die. They really like to get this easy kill on crit, if you can call it easy. Pile I just needs to get that telekinesis grab. They don't have the vision in crit. Arctic burns over to the tree line, realizes that Envy's moving very aggressively forward. And TP support is arriving from OG. In fact, just no tell. This will be a, a proper defense coming in if they're going to commit someone like a Gyrocopter. Obviously, the talent push isn't really great from OG. At the same time, Moon's moving into position onto Weeha. Alchemist could prepare the concoction, and then you follow up with a stun. Oh, and... pounce missed! Oh, okay. Now with a curse, Eternal Envy's going to go down. They were not ready for that Gyro. Wanted to pounce and immediately gets Winter's Curse, and actually, no matter what, Envy can't really go for it. The pounce oh, shot's coming, that. Cox is going to connect as well. Weeha, that TP, nothing's going to be yet there in time. He's already down, and again, OG with a successful rotation. Miracle won't be so lucky. Puppy's right behind him, ready for the body block, but Misery, they'll just end up man moaning him with that Fable from Pilot Eye. They have enough damage, combining with the amplification. There's no more brain sap with a concoction. Miracle, just so beefy. The Chemical Ray is doing work underneath the Answer Spray, too. The Cold Embrace and Miracle, he's got more life with OG supports arriving. The Battery Assault won't reach up to Pilot Eye, die, but it's Puppy who's in trouble, running away from three OG heroes down the river, if possible. Pilot Eye, die, makes a break for the tree with the battery assault one more pop is there moon able to punch him down miracle stunned himself up while he was chasing up the puppy and now with weeha arriving to the find they have the amplification on the alchemist giving good vision but it's no tell envy arriving the call that already mean popped he'll dark pack himself in gets a leash no over on crit not arriving in time but weeha's got sonic wave ready and rearing to go needs to line up the three heroes they're pretty damn low Sonic Wave is hard! Miracle! The Cold Embrace from Chris doing his work once again, but the damage is there from Envy. He's ticking out through the S spray, but the one shot is doing its work, and now Weeha looks for his triple kill. Miracle making a break for the DD rune. Let's give him bullet charges as well. Envy, the sun is there, but there's not enough damage from OG to return it hard enough. The Slark will get a pick off. Weeha will get a double kill. And OG almost had the board leveled on them as far as the kill count. This is one thing that the Slark can do in this game that the Anti Mage couldn't in the last. These extended engagements where Eternal Envy gets to weave in and out of the fight and just... Even though a couple of the pounces don't hit, he still gets the damage out he needs and finds some very key kills. I think the Secret fans have just found their vocal cords. The OG fans have been pretty heavy. <laughs> In fact, now, the war has begun. It feels like we're really creating a nice atmosphere here for our grand final, a secret and OG. They just battle heavily against each other. But it's just the calm before the storm, and the storm is coming. Puppy and Pylai die. They are smoking and moving into the dire jungle. I'll have a look and see what OG's got inside their camps. I'll well, notice there's one stack, and there is only one stack. But these are important things for Secret to keep tabs on. This is how the Alchemist gets out of control. Or the Gyrocopter finishes up his SMY. Without Fiend's Crypto, they can't find kills. They're moving over. They'll understand that Moon's up here. In fact, now Moon pings out the fact that he's just scattered the supports. Rockets for vision, but it's a little too shallow. 
man, look at the level advantage on the the dire supports. If you look over the hero level, it's two very different types of strategies here where Secret on their cores are looking great, but their supports are level four and five. OG supports level seven and eight. Just the ultimates not being available for Secret yet and them still being this close in the game is quite the feat against such an aggressive team as OG. It's also understandable that you want to see Weeha with those levels. Hello, Hookshot going on Misery, but Pilot Eye has that Rubik, the perfect counter of Clockwork, throwing him out for the concoction Misery. The Cogs pushed him up. He couldn't have any reaction. And Moon able to get that pick on Sana. And again, we're in this position where the Blink Dagger, it's almost the same time and the same gold on Misery, and he just gets delayed again. I think this is the type of game with Slaughter where you might want to go for a four step first simply because of the clockwork. It's an easier build up. You will lose less gold along the way when you die like this. It's better for your teammates as well. And they have other ways of initiating. It doesn't have to be the Slaughter. They have Tilkinses on Rubik. They have the Slark who can just pounce in and immediately use his ultimate and set them up that way. It looks like Slark's going to start with the Shadow Blade too. So that'll, yep. be, that'll be his initiation. Very happy to see that. I think... I can't remember in pro games how often it happens. I think Slark is not a Midas safe lane hero at all. Um, and in my book, you almost always need a mobility item for Shadow Blade or Blink. And then you can get something like an SNY. He's actually hiding. This is classic Envy stuff, just thinking ahead. He's hiding his Shadow Blade on the courier, so OG don't know he has it. And now that he clears the wave, he will be picking it up again. And probably moving over towards those dire ancients. Or oh, ETPs to the top lane, which was going to happen. Moon hook shots himself in, catches out Puppy again. Brain tap and nine there. The nightmare will buy a little bit of time, but not really enough. Envy has arrived, but he's underneath the dire sentry one. So they're aware he's there, but will it still be enough? You actually get the double crush and Sonic Wave! Ingram Weeha hitting so hard, but the curse is on the turn levy. He cannot keep attacking. There's not enough mana for his ulti either, but we are still with a double kill. Misery back in for another crush and the stolen curse controls Crit, giving Weeha a triple kill. Kill and Pylai die one of his own. Now is this time. We saw it time and time again in game one of this series where OG would leave one man standing. This time it's secret. And they'll take the tier one tower to boot. Beautiful play by Misery. Without an initiation item, he simply just sprints in, realizes all these key abilities that could stop him from going in have already been expended. He gets a three-man crush. One of them is in cold embrace, but it doesn't matter. He hits the two others that he needs to, buys the time for the Queen of Pain to get in a really good position. And Weeha with that Sonic Wave just seals the deal. That was a four-for-one exchange, only Puppy dying for the Radiant. I do believe he died, right? I think he died. Or oh, was it clean 4-0? No, I think he, he died. No, no, yeah, he, he, he died. died. He died. Yeah. And so a great, great steal from the Rubik as well. This is what I was talking about. When Secret start getting their ultimates, they will have even more in the tank. And maybe an underrated ability in this fight or in this game so far has been the Fate Bolt. Every time Pilot Eye shows up, the OG heroes naturally just congregate together in one spot, and he hits four heroes with Fate Bolt. That's a really significant nuke. Yeah. Not just the nuke as well, but making it very difficult for OG to pump out any level of damage. And they don't really have big damage. In fact, OG. They're going to go for a little bit more of security if they can finish it, of course. He does go the four staff here on Slaughter. I like okay. it. You've also got Moon almost completing up. When Roshan dies, he'll practically have the money for his blade mail. The yes and why is the build coming out from Notel. It's going to take a while before he gets his BKB or even looks to get a big damage dealing item. Roshan will belong to OG, however. Nothing will stop that. And they put it into the hands of the Gyro. And what does Secret really get in return? They got a little bit of farm out inside the jungle, they had a little bit of pressure mid tier one tower, but that's all for this. Yep. They're making a call for bottom. The observers are down now, not for the dire side, so OG I'm fully aware of this. Crit just instantly tries to get out of here. Moon's the one being chased, but there's that blade mail. The orc are not gonna do have enough damage for Weeha to kill him. And in fact, now with that big rotation from secret to bottom lane, OG. Try and make the most out of the space in mid. Puppy plans... Oh, he's already got the Observer Ward. In fact, Envy just pounces himself in. He's still got his ulti. But he understands that life is the easy commodity for him. He can just disappear, regenerate back up again. The fortification. It all bought time for Misery to rotate over. Can he use his four stuff? Will he even want to? They've already lost the T1 tower. Envy's hunting for an opening, but there's nothing to be gained. Yeah, he needs more items, I think, before he can make a and as confident play as this one. Of course, what he wants to do is try to just jump in and get a couple of attacks off, steal some stats with the Essence Shift, reset and re-go. Currently, Essence Shift is only level two, so it's only a 30-second steal and can't really carry it through later on. 
a couple more levels on Envy will make a big difference. And I'm curious to see which item build he goes for here. Slark is one of those heroes that has multiple options. Sometimes you see a Scotty, sometimes Sancho Yasha, sometimes straight BKB, sometimes Yasha BKB. Yes, behind enemy lines here. That they are. Misery, finding one of them. In fact, it's going to be the moon. Clockwork. He's got hookshot available. Hookshot up to Weeha. Blink is still out. And that'll land to escape. And once again, Parde, the perfect controller. Eternal Envy. Curse up. Can he get this ulti off? Will they kill him? There goes your ulti and Envy. He just wants to get out. The TP with a cog. Puts him out. He'll bounce, but he's just in the middle of the entire OG lineup. So Puppy and Envy find themselves pushing up the daisies. As OG will move this momentum now down to the bottom lane and towards that tier one tower. Pilot, I will be doing what he can in the top lane split pushing, but can't really get anything out of this moon already. Sending some rockets top. One of the big benefits of Clockwork is, of course, his ability to defend from across the map. And it's not the greatest ability, but everything adds up. And OG with another big fight for them. They will be claiming this tower for sure. Really and good that. money coming their way too now. With this step, with the death of the tower, they'll push a 3k advantage. But secret, they try and keep it level. So it will be a tier 1 for a tier 1 fly. He could potentially go for the deny here, uh, but already Queen of Pain has taken it. So it will be a tower for a tower. As Moon, hookshot, 5 seconds. The secret won't wait, won't, wait, won't wait around that long. And his blade mail is really, really good right now. Secret have so much burst, but the heroes that have that damage have relatively low health. Both the Slark and the Queen of Pain will, to a large extent, just kill themselves off. And if you look over OG's lineup, I think BKB in this game is just such a good item that both Queen of Pain and Slark should consider it as their secondary Weeha. item. I'm not sure if you really want to do this. Starts on the Orc of an Alchemist oh. and actually blinks away from the hook shot of Moon. That could have gone really, really wrong for him. Actually, there was no Winter's Curse. I think he would have been fine. Crit was pretty much as far away as he could be. The title envy, pounce huh? down. He can't get the leash over on Crit. Oh, but crit the Arctic will wear off, and Crit's in almost exactly the same position <laughs> as previous. He built his dragon pin again. This time he gets out, though. And they counter with the Observer. Of course, this is one of the benefits of Slark that... I think we don't talk about too much, also because we don't see Slark that often. He's very good at finding wards. You just notice that you're losing movement speed and it means the enemy has wards in the area. And Secret, obviously reading that and placing a sentry close to their tier 2 tower bottom and clearing that up. I'm wondering if that then means OG go for a little bit more defensive wards. Because at this moment they've only got two wards on the field, in fact one of them just timed out. So they've only got that one aggressive ward inside the Radiant Jungle. And they may want to have it up on top lane, because no tell, he's coming up behind Weeha. And Misery, well, he was there, but with the Clockwork Rocket, there's no hookshot available, so it's a simple blink away to safety. But now Team Secret understand where the fight's coming. And Eternal Envy does not want to take it, though. He's forcing at the bottom lane. Crit, with a spin of blast, can actually drag the creep way back and actually kill a fair chunk of it off. So it ends up being a tower going the way of OG, but not enough momentum able to be sustained from Secret on that bot lane. But they're waiting for OG to move back. Puppy sitting on the tree line, but Miracle, he TPs in, knows that oh, he's there, and then they weave. use the weave. Hits both we as well as Puppy, allowing Miracle to blink concoction stun over to Puppy. He doesn't have the nightmare timing, not when Dazzle arrives with that heal. So Puppy will end up dropping when the trap is sprung. Fortune. And it looks like Eternal Envy's choice will be the Scotty. It just now expiring for OG. Pretty long respawn, five minutes. Secret are gonna like that, of course, as OG has the dire advantage and a good Roshan lineup. It's not like Secrets is bad with amp damage and everything, but I just got a feeling with OG, the map control they're getting, that this next Roshan would be theirs. Having these extra few minutes for Secret could make a big difference. I want to point out how much better Weeha is doing in this game than the previous one. Oh. I think that's one of the fundamental differences where he can actually start becoming a, a really important core in this game. Building for the Aghanim Scepter just to essentially be able to fight more frequently and defend towers and buy time for the Slark to get big. Mm -hmm. And Secret making a wise choice now of boarding the fight against OG. Crit with a fresh Blink Dagger. It's actually sitting on the Courier right now, just north of, of the Roche Pit. And it's coming down finally. Delivering that point boost for over the moon. But with this now wiping but a very large distance from the jumping heroes like Slark, like Slaughter, like Queen of Pain. Get that perfect counter curse.
Yeah, Miracle's getting really, really rich this game. As I mentioned, Slark is a pretty good counter pick and they have amp damage, so even if this Alchemist gets really big, Secret will have the tools, but Miracle is getting very far ahead, as he should on the Alchemist this game. And I would imagine we're gonna see per perhaps an AC next for him. Would be a good choice. Can, of course, try to go more of a combat build with the Sanjin Yasha and just go straight in for a Basher, knowing that he has the blink. Try for an Abyssal Blade. And it's gonna be Shadow Blade, actually. They're going for... They're prepping for top right Soul now. Bridge. No tell. Well, you can still have your fun on bottom lane, but it's the top lane where the initiation is. Four star forward to the crush with a sonic wave. That orchid pop, it won't be enough, but we are six around just long enough to get the hit. Blinks himself away to safety. And OG, they won't find an opening. Miracle, well, he just sees the end of the puppy TP. So with the Observer Ward down, Secret can make all the right choices to get out of here. And this is what you want to do if you're Secret. It's avoiding these 5 on 5 engagements and just forcing small skirmishes and split pushing. I'm not sure how big of a difference this Lark... Of course he's a difference from the last game compared to an AM. It's definitely not the same game. But yep. the way Secret are playing right now, I feel like they learned a lot from game Hulk one. Shot. Nice Moon. hook shot. Predictory Envy was going, they had a little bit of extra vision because of the sentry wall that was on the lane. But again, Pylai die. Oh, okay, not commit the curse. They want this Rubik down, but Pylai die with stick charges. He'll move into the tree line, crippling himself forward, and Pylai die will Fade Bolt remove a little bit of the damage, but it still ends up dying. Okay, I, I'm starting to wonder what's going to happen here with Ochi. They move around, even killing off someone. Okay, Envy, he wants crit. There's no curse. The blink actually takes crit down again. Envy walking underneath that sentry ward didn't, well, didn't learn the lesson from the last attack that crit did. And now with no ulti, Moom is closing the distance, but not fast enough. Yeah, but, but, but get back to the question. How does OG actually kill off the Slark when they catch him out, once he gets bigger? Originally, I was thinking that Ultimate Orb could have been turning into something like a Skadi and give Slark a lot of life early on. But in fact, it's going to be a Lincoln Sphere coming in for the Slark. So now you don't even have that instant control onto the Slark. How do OG deal with him? That's a good question. If Miracle goes for an Abyssal Blade, he can sacrifice a Concoction for an Abyssal or vice versa, but I don't think it's enough. Speaking of Concoction, it's going to be a stun on a Puppy. It's a Shadow Blade, in fact, the build coming out for Miracle is his next item. <laughs> Goodbye. Puppy's very far behind in this game. He has, he's been sacrificed a lot. He has found some levels, at least he's level 8. And all it takes for the Vayne to have a big impact in this game is Good Nightmare and maybe a half-channeled Fiend script on a key target just buying Slark the needed time. And don't underestimate Enfeeble. I think maxing out Enfeeble will make it very difficult for OG to see high ground. Easy hook, oh. hook shot. Pushing Pilot Eye a little bit further back. He's got the pickup over on Crip and Moon with a blood mail up. Blade mail up. There's no way he can fight. Pilot Eye is sitting in the tree for as long as possible. Supports arrive with Miracle getting the sun over on Misery. He'll go down as well. And Weeha can't stop. Secret, they've committed too much. Envy might be in this fight, but he's not doing enough work. So you get the buyback out from Pilot Eye. They need his control in this engagement. But OG, they've kind of already won. They've burnt through the Queen of Pain and Puppy with a split blast. Actually, with a concoction as well. He can't do enough. He'll end up dying. Pilot die here's your die back four heroes down from team secret eternal envy just basically cuts his losses aka the rest of the team secret team five thousand gold swing plus a tower they can get more than this there's no buybacks apart from the slaughter he respawns in 10 seconds og might even be able to take the tier 3 tower and all of that is just offset by the blink positioning from Weha, he basically blinks into the enemy team and is in a position where he can't... He was like searching for the sonic wave angle and it just didn't exist. And then he got cursed next to the Slark who just killed off his own teammate Getting very ready quickly. to fight. Envy jumping on Notal, trying to distract him. Misery, he's coming in too, but that defensive weed's going to give a lot of armor. And Envy, he can't pounce himself out of here. 17 one shots might be available. Now he'll get the pounce out and Slaughter force starts himself forward. Gets a ton of miracle, but the damage, the tier 3 tower is down. Rubik's back up in 8 seconds time. Weha has the sonic wave. As that rocket doesn't get the kill, but they get the fiend grip. Clockwork, that fiend grip is up. Concoction arrives from Miracle. Weha still waiting on this sonic wave. Misery forward gets a big crush, and there's just Sonic Wave taking out the Alchemist. No tell control with the amplification. The only thing keeping alive is the Shadow Grave. Have they got a stun? No, they don't, but they'll find the kill on Moon. But actually, well, there's your push forward. Fly will drop as well. And very lucky that No tell was able to survive through this. Crit's also in the run out. But Secret, they successfully defended, cost them the buyback on the Rubik previously. 
and all they lose the tier three. Yeah, they need this. They're rushing to the Roche pit. OG know it's happening because of that dominated creep, and else they could just read it out of the map movements. But I don't think they have the tools to fight this, even with a buyback on the Alchemist. They need, they the, need clockwork. the Clockwork Rocket to find the engaged timing. <laughs> Why is this high creep wave following them uh, in? <laughs> <laughs> Agro, please! We are... Well, I suppose it's easy money for him. Um, but now, Roshan taken. The Agassi model will be the hands of Envy. That followed them all the way from the bottom lane. I thought these things were meant to lose Agro after a while. And if OG could have found a way of disengaging from that incredible fight they took and the Tier 3, they would have almost had this game in the bag. It would have been a 10,000 gold lead. And Roshan, they could have claimed oh, shortly they move after. With Puppy. They move instantly up. They'll need the Fiend Script instantly to stop that Moon Blade Mount. But then again, maybe Envy, he's actually killing himself right now. No pounds away. He's got the Agus Immortal Miracle looking for the stun. The Concoction flies forward, but Lincoln Spear will end up stopping that stun from Miracle engaging. The TP out in top lane will help at least one survive. But it will not help Crit. He goes down. The Clockwork Rocket getting a little bit more vision over on Envy. How long until Sick could also start thinking about buying a gen themselves? Envy keeps fighting underneath sentry wards. But then again, OG are also burning a lot of money buying these sentries. And okay, the gem does come now from OG on the Wyvern. Not Wyvern, from by the way, building for what should be... <laughs> Is this a refresher? He, he, has... he was he was trying to build refresher in game one, so I'm assuming it'll be a refresher here in game two. Is there? I think Lotus Orb is a really good item too against Secrets lineup, removing amplify damage, preventing Bane from casting Fiend Script, preventing Bane from casting a good Nightmare without sleeping himself. Can remove the Orchid from the Queen of Pain. It's just an incredibly good pickup here that I'm not so sure it's a refresher. He's also his mana pool isn't that great just yet with only Tranquils, so if he casts just a couple of abilities, he can't even get two curses off anyway. I'm curious to see where Crit goes with this. There's the Agon Scepter now for Weeha. He did go for a pit stop on the way to get that BKB. I think Secret are feeling like they're in a pretty good uh, pretty good position in this game. Even though they're behind on gold, the game plan this time around is at least a thing and they're not getting rolled over. That's a lot, it's a lot more comfortable for these heroes to play. Like having Lincoln Sphere over on the Slark, it's that extra life. Like Envy was underneath a tier 3 tower bearing down almost all the OG heroes, and he's still able to survive. This just shows you that lack of control, which is why I'm wondering, like, yeah, Lotus Orb's great to reflect, and uh, great to dispel, but maybe they need to have that second curse from the Wyvern, just to ensure they got that lockdown control on Team Secret. Either way, we'll Envy see what he does ward. soon. Oh, Crit, jumping forward, Puppy, what does he want to do right now? Well, he can't Nightmare, they force staff him out though. Well, Rocket's chasing in Misery with a double crush. Puppy does get healed up. There's a Nightmare protection, breaks free pretty quickly, but Miracle already moving forward. Gets the summon concoction, being prepared by... Highlight like Die about to be returned over, but to who? Actually stunning Miracle underneath that Radiant Sentry. The cold is arriving, but Misery dying so quickly. At least Weeha finds something, though he doesn't. Crit gets that cold embrace off, and now with a curse, they hold Weeha in position. The BKB protected from the magical damage, and he blinks into the tree line. They don't see him. Now they do. The TP cancelled with the death of the Queen of Pain. And three heroes lost for Team Secret. Tier 2 Tower might be down, but OG, another fight their way. Puppy wanted to deward that ward so bad, and he ends up paying himself and two extra lives for it. Kind of surprising they don't send Rubik to do it. The extra range and the fact that Rubik has his own four staff would allow him to pretty easily disengage, but they of course want to remove this vision so badly. As getting rid of that ward would have just secured the enemy jungle for quite a while, just for eternal enemy to farm. Since he has the Aegis and the Lincolns, he can just farm all the camps. If OG advance onto him, he can immediately just pop his ultimate and run away with Shadowblade as well. OG make... They just... They get such a small time interval to make that play. They engage in between the two attacks of Puppy on that ward. They have like five seconds to make the call, and they just go in on it immediately. They're very confident. And she be even more confident. The Assault Curas or now... Gained by the Alchemist, so OG, their team fight's becoming stronger, not to mention the Aghanim Scepter on the Clockwork, it's never-ending jump. Speaking of that, Envy initiating onto no tell. the Crush will be there as Misery blinks himself forward, but that Cold Embrace keeps the Gyro alive again, Slush burns with his Lincoln Spear and he pounces down towards the supports of OG, killing a five with a shallow grave, spoiling the fun, Misery's waiting until the right time, Pilot like falls up himself out of these cogs, and there's your Crush, the right time is now, the Sonic Wave connects on Griff Fly, will end up dying a double kill for Weeha, he keeps the 
battle going as another Tuzzy just grabs. So it's a throw miracle down the river. Not gonna be enough. This Puppy hook shot down by Moon. He's actually ticking outside the S spray. The concoction will ensure the kill. Maybe not Puppy. Nightmare denies himself. In front of OG's lineup and the battle continues. Miracle, Orchid for now. This chemical rage is going to wear off in just a second. And Envy, the sustain is unbelievable, especially when he's got a secondary life. Miracle on that front line. They got the gem on Weeha. It was stolen from OG and now it's going to be used to kill off Miracle. Underneath his own acid spray. Down he goes. 70 seconds on the sideline. No buyback at Barbell. Where's that hole? Oh, oh wow. Moon! The play! The gem take as well! Sees a retreating Weeha and hits a smack straight plumb between the eyes of Weeha. And I was about to say that was actually a fight OG should be pretty happy with because they got rid of the Aegis, they saved their gyrocopter. Eternal Envy missing the pounce on the gyro by an inch there means is the difference between life or death for No Tail. He gets out and then after getting that gem returned to their to their base, easily a good fight for OG. And now, getting rid of the Aegis should give them a lot more strength going forward. Of course, in the previous fights, they don't really want to focus Envy, knowing that the second life is such a big problem. It's gonna now be they can really lock too. him down. Well, it's going to be harder because he's now completing up his full Scardi. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, that's a big stat gain right here. Yeah. There you go. Like, Envy sustain, even without the Aegis, the Immortal was still pretty heavy. But OG, they five-man smoke. They see Puppy. That's an easy hookshot kill. So worry about who else is around, and in fact, Eternal Envy just running his way up mid. He's here for the creep wave, but he might. Oh, if OG could find that range. He it's moves a very deeper and deeper to the get. dire side, and Moon, there's your hook shot up, and Envy instantly starts the Dark Pact. The Cogs won't lock him down. Moon could go for a... Well, he can't go for the hook yet, the crush, catching out the Gyrocopter. Even to a point where now you're starting to enfeeble up the Gyro just to restrict his damage, and he still doesn't have a damage dealing item. OG's DPS is not hitting. So, same with that hook shot. <laughs> and secret smoke. smoke. They're coming. They're trying to turn around. They Moon. were spotted by a ward though. They're moving forward. Envy, he sees the clockwork. The cogs come up and pushes Envy back as well as Weeha with the pounds forward. Envy getting close to the hook shot. He'll actually get himself away towards Snow Tail with a pickup with Fiend Script. Puppy, is there a stun control? The BKBs come with a call out. The Sonic Wave hits hard with Queen of Pain already grabbing one puppy. Nightmare in the Alchemist. He's taking out this fight. So is Moon, but with the safety of a TP back to his own fountain. The concoction again being stolen and returned to the gyro. Stark finds the kill in the bat. Catching Mirror. Go out! Can he retreat with the wave? No, he cannot! Envy will grab a double kill. No Alchemist for 70 seconds. This Team Secret will push down the mid lane. The ping came out saying, does someone want to grab that T1 tower in the bottom lane too? But really, if they can force a buyback, back, this is going to be a very costly fight for OG. This Slark pig is proving to be such a good solution to the way OG wants to play the fights. He's an initiator. He has good burst damage on the open. He deals damage through Cold Embrace with two of his abilities and the way OG win a lot of their fights in the games we've seen so far is just by drawing them out, keeping their heroes alive with Shallow Grave and with heals and just ultimately just draining the enemy team. But you know what? Slark heals faster than your two supports do, so Envy is not scared of committing and just going in and out of the fight like that. He just needs five seconds in the shadows coming back in with full health again, dealing so much damage when the fights extend. This gyro buyout, it costs him so much. The fact he's also holding onto a quarter staff, no tell. It's like if this is going to be a butterfly for him at the rate that Envy, with the also the amount of money he gets, gets from the fight, if he does get a Monkey King bar, yeah, what is the the gyro? His main defensive factor isn't there anymore. And there's still so much nuke damage from Team Secret. Queen of Pain could be looking at her own Shiva's guard. Maybe this is also like, would you even go for the Shivas or would you look towards the Assault Curos? Try and counter the Aura OG you're already adding with both Acid Spray and their own AC. If you go AC, your Slaughter will get probably get the Shivas later on. Uh, usually you let Slaughter get the AC as his item after the BKB, but Misery is still pretty low on farm in this game, sitting below 10k net worth at the 40 minute mark almost. Um, so I think, I think you put the AC onto Weeha just to boost up the damage of Envy. Both items are really good though. Here so. comes OG. They might be really sad about the timing unless they get the kill. Puppy walking up the lane, but they see a better time. Oh, hookshot oh, block! No! The mid hook shot allows Envy to pounce away up the hillside. Roshan's only just spawned up, and in fact, Envy buys a BKB. So OG blow their smoke. They do have another one still in, in stock, but they'll move over and discover that Roshan is now up. 
And they'll have to be quick about this. And now they can't curse Envy anymore. It's the only BKB piercing ultimate that it would break a Lincoln's. Hookshot will, of course, stun him up, but not remove the Lincoln. So as long as Envy's in BKB with Lincoln's fear ready, he can feel so confident just going in on any target he wants, knowing there's no counterplay, but... Wow, that didn't take long. Alchemist is uh, pretty good at roaching. Secret abating. This is one of the most obvious traps. The only thing missing right now is a techie's mind flag. <laughs> I'm happy we don't see that hero anymore. I am sad. Envy, moving forward. OG are fairly well split at the moment. But they're still close enough that they can lend that support. In fact, Slark, he's looking for the opening and he found it. It's going to be the Alchemist. Can they get the crush? The hook shot from Moon might buy the space for Alchemist. Combining with the Cold Embrace for Puppy. A full control on Crit. He can't get the curse off because the Fiend's grip. Now he can because of the Shallow Grave. And turn Levy inside the ult. He needs to get out of here. The BKB is going to expend. Pounds of cooldown one second time. But they get the curse. Envy locked and Secret just now playing left for dead, but maybe not. Moon, the hook shot catching Weeha. Blink in one second. He's got the time. The concoct is being prepared. Miracle needs more space, and he got the vision. We hard gets hit. The support's right behind, and he'll go down. No, the blink. He's still on the run. The homing oh, missile on the tail, but the hook shot from Moon. Well off target. The miracle with the jump forward. They have to kill the rocket. Moon, we have to die to this one. Oh, and actually, oh, the oh, protects it. Wow. If they can't kill it, they'll just so leap through it. You've still got a turn, Levy on the side. No G. Now it's their turn to knock on the mid lane. 40 seconds on the Slark. Exposed barracks in the bottom lane since a very long time ago. And OG, they still have the Aegis. They're not scared yep. of forcing this. Weeha does have the Sonic Wave, however. So the Enfeeble over on the Jari. You might want to think about Enfeebling Miracle. He's doing so much damage at the moment. What's Pilot I going to get? Okay, Arctic Burn. Not so terrific. But that bottom rag, Secret will just let it go. They can't defend it. They can't get exit kills. They can just get the amplification and watch where they move out. They have to let it go. Great fight for OG. Even if they do miss a couple of the uh, the chase kills. It is actually going to be the refresher all for the Wyvern. Best second Perseverance has been purchased. So amazing do. as well. That Shallow Grave from Fly, it just bought enough time. Secret spent so much to try and kill off that Wyvern and it just wasn't, that wasn't even successful. It was absolutely perfect timing and that Grave was the only reason OG stood a fighting chance there. If he, if Wyvern dies, they don't have the follow-up curse that kills Envy in the end. They can just advance into the fight knowing that Envy can keep just dealing damage onto the Alchemist. He doesn't even need to kill him, he just needs to hit the heroes enough times so that toward the end of the fight, he will be able to kill them off almost on his own with all the stats stolen. That Shallow Grave from Fly, he's just made so many of those Graves all tournament. Extremely clutch, has to read the timing on the Sonic Wave. It's one of those abilities that you would usually say is actually pretty good against Shallow, right? It's a big burst that comes out of nowhere for 500 damage. Mm -hmm. But Fly is just ready for it every single time. Um, and OG, they've got so many different ways to dispel everything, even the attacks. Like a fresh Yule Scepter over on Moon, they'll have that for the next fight. The Butterfly has to be completed by no -tail. And because Eternal Envy went for the BKB, this Monkey King bar has been delayed even more. So they don't have that direct damage into the Gyrocopter. But as we also saw, Miracle's pumping out a hell of a lot. He triggers that chemical rage, and he's quite a scary force to go up against. And he's got a lot of money, too. I'm curious what Miracle will be buying here. Could finish the Silver Edge. I don't know how valuable that is here. Not really very much. So we could be seeing something like, there's a possibility of a BKB, if he wants to go that route, or Abyssal Blade. You'd have to drop something for it. Like, you'd have to actually drop his initiation of the Shadow Blade. Or the Blink. All the blink. Miracle running down. There's a sentry ward up on top of that hillside. OG have no vision there until now. But if they de ward it, they reveal their position. I'm wondering if this BKB choice from Envy was a mistake. I think he was doing so well without it in terms of his control in the fights. Just having Lincoln's and Dark Pact, you already have so many defensive tools and the Shadow Dance. And then you also buy a defensive item in the BKB. <laughs> he could have had a item and I think they need to be able to kill off the targets maybe a bit faster at this rate. OG are preparing for their attack. Crit's close enough that the gem will reveal the slark if he decides to shadow blade himself forward. And that will allow for the pounce. In fact, yep, there it is. Envy showing himself a secret. They're looking the wrong way. They're looking to the top lane, but Moon! He couldn't actually get the hookshot line. That range creep was blocking him. Yeah, he had to wait, but I think Eternal Envy was running uh, top anyway, so it wasn't going to happen. And you could say, oh, that kind of 
blew the surprise from OG, but Secret knew they were there. <laughs> yeah. Secret were avoiding every other place in the map. So they moved up to the top lane. Envy was pushing out the bottom lane a fair way. And now, looks like OG going to rotate themselves down. They, they can't really achieve anything more on this oh, bottom lane. Maximal Rotary spawn enough. by about 5 seconds off. This is 10 minutes and 54. Good news for Secret, which they don't know. <laughs> it's the farm time. Yep. And what's the critical items they're looking for? Because I'm still looking at a large amount of money over on Weeha. It looks like he is going to be building the Shiva's Guard, but do you take the risk and buy that and sacrifice your buyback? Is the Shiva going to bring enough to the engagement to warrant it? I don't think so. I think the buyback is is more important for now. I'm still a bit surprised he didn't go for the AC, in my opinion. It won't take that long. Like, he's only got another 600 gold, and he's got it. Because then he'll have surplus enough for, like, to buy it and have buyback. Yep. It's not Very much reliable gold on him right now with a 2400. OG are starting to flatline here. They spent so much time waiting for Team Secret to arrive. Like, yes, they had a 12,000 advantage. They almost lost all of it in gold. And now it's just like a flat line around 11k. The experience is nothing in between these two teams. And really, when it comes down to the fight, the, there's not that much that's also separating them. It's all about that initiation. If OG can get a good curse off, and how much space is Eternal, a Eternal Envy able to get away from the curse of crit? Moonshard on Miracle. Prioritizing that over giving Ags to Dazzle. I think the 60 attack speed on him will do more. And of course, Clockwork bought his own, so he doesn't need one. The one on Gyro is pretty awful with how this game is being played in general right now. Yeah, I don't think it needs it's also not good. Like if, if we turn it into uh, just a split push, maybe then the global cooldown could be useful. But Secret's lineup isn't that good at split pushing that it's going to be very valuable. Of course, it does give stats too, so True. once Miracle is completely maxed out and just swimming in gold, then he could start giving it to No Tail as well, but he's probably last on the list of Gold to be spent here. Okay, how does Team Secret do this? The Observer Ward, if they... Okay, they use Envy again as bait. Moon, moves forward, they trigger. The Lincoln Spear already, and the Force Up actually pushing Envy back down. The Refresher Orb Curse is still available for crit. But OG, Miracle's actually gonna stun himself up. He's already burned this Chemical Rage. The Secret don't wanna fight this. Yeah, the Curse one down is down, but there's no reason to engage. They're still buying the time back now. Moon moves himself forward. Cox will push Misery back out, locking in the M here. But then Moon tries to run out. Misery four stars forward, but the defensive heal center from Moon buys him the space. Misery has to trigger BKB. Get away from the rest of OG. And Moon was really far ahead of his team there, but that Yule yeah. Scepter usage probably just kept him alive. I'm saying that, and his team were coming in, Careful so. with the run, that gem is still there, Lincoln Spear's gonna trigger, Envy still got the ulti available, and well, does he have enough? Moon with the hookshot fall, but Envy just runs himself out with the Shadow Dance going to work, they get the curse over on Weeha, and that Queen of Pain is down. 80 seconds on the sideline, buyback is available. That's OG, is this enough of an opening for them? What do we got, flat cannon for Pilot Eye, that's not what he wants. The problem for Weeha in this game of the Queen of Pain is that he needs to time his spells so well to not make them Miracle. useless. He's coming all in. the AoE heal. Concoction, he wants to go on Misery. Okay, no, he does not. Moon's leaving. I thought maybe with the Hookshot 4 they could go for something, but... Looks like OG will not be able to punish that death. They want to control the map until Roche spawns. They don't know the spawn timer is long, but... He could start spawning now. They have Ancient Stacks for uh, No Tail to farm here. There is the Basher, now coming up for Miracle. So does he sell, does he sell the Shadow Blade for this? And just keep the blink dagger? Yes, he does. I think it's the right choice as well. Man, he's getting so much money. Having that full abyssal may not be that far off. Obviously, because he's an alchemist. And the goldest lead is still 10,000. What you need to keep in mind is, of course, alchemist will always have really high net worth. Uh, but his value relative to the gold is not as high as other heroes. And you're saying that, and you've looked at Miracle in this game and how much he's done. But when you do get to that super late game scenario, other heroes just tend to take over. Such as the Slark. And the Queen of Pain will buy the Shivas with the buyback as we talked about. Slark sitting on 4,000. Very curious what we see out of Envy. I think Abyssal Blade has to be the choice here. Really? The, you or don't think Butterfly. Monkey, you don't think the Monkey King bar? Because he's still going to attack directly into that Butterfly of No Tail. It's actually true. Never mind. Yeah, both the uh, enemy cores do have evasion. 
Uh, it's not just the gyro, but Miracle also with the evasion from the Solar Crest. Yeah, MKB is is probably better than Abyssal in this case. Envy loops around. Okay, yeah, there's some pings. OG are aware of this. The hook shot actually being used by Moon defensively, as well as Cobbs really worried that Slark is just stalking them. And they'll move over into the pit. Now, there's just a couple of dead golems that are sitting here. Envy will mop that up, as well as killing off the Sol Ring and TP. A little bit of spring cleaning for the Slark. That's OG. Are you going to hook shot? Well, he is. Uh, but no tells butt was in the way. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> I think no starting to block Moon on purpose just so he doesn't jump 2,000 range away from his team. <laughs> but of course, Moon can play with so much confidence because of the Yules. I think it's a really intelligent pickup here, just allowing him to buy so much time that he doesn't need a four stack. He needs to hook shot in. The 2.5 seconds of self Yules is enough for his teammates to reach him with Cold Embrace and Grave. 10 seconds still Rosham. The teams have waited so long, Envy keeps scouting out by Shadow Blading in. You just saw as well the Arctic Burn being triggered by Crit to get the vision inside. And there's still a lot of buybacks. And with a tier 2 tower on the bottom lane, OG's got a way that they can get the rest of their team down there. Alchemist, Clockwork, as well as the Dazzle all have buybacks. Even Wyvern is just shy of 350. Now they jump forward. And Lincoln Spear's going to trigger once again on Envy. In fact, it doesn't actually help out Puppy. Envy ends up getting him stumped at the jump forward. They go on Miracle. Is there enough control? Actually, get out. But Envy goes in a long way in. And Puppy, what's he got? He nightmares over on the Dazzle. There's no shot like great feed trips on the Wyvern. The perfect control from the Bane. They bring down one. And with the pounds forward, Envy wants to kill on a fly. He won't take it, however. None unless they're going to stun. And Envy and Weeha under the call out. Hawk shot from. And I can bumping at the back of no tell for the Alchemist. Well, okay, that's one way to do it. A double kill coming his way. And we are the TP out successful. The hook shot too late for Moon. I actually think he's in the tree line instead. But they can go in now, OG, and take out Roshan. I'm wondering if Secret want to try to expend a buyback for this. Looks like no. It'll be dangerous, considering how quick OG killed off Roshan before. And I thought that was going to be a really good fight for Secret. So they force staff out, they save the Slark from the first curse, and I think the second curse never went off because of the Sonic Wave. They pounce in on the Dazzle, force him to self grave, so all of these cooldowns are used. And then Envy just really got confused in that tree line. I think he got blocked by creeps with phase boots on cooldown, couldn't really find, find the pounce angle he was looking for, and they barely killed him off there with the Alchemist, who now has an Abyssal Blade. He does. And he just again onto the Gyro, and now the Cheese in Moon's inventory, as if he didn't have enough defensive tools already. There's a secondary way of staying alive, and this is really, really difficult for Secret. 30 seconds might be too long. They perhaps have to buy back the Slark, and Envy desperately needs another item. He's not really progressing very much. They have Sonic Wave off cooldown in one second time, so they can get rid of the Creep Wave, and this is where the Ags from Weeha can work, but if he comes in range... They need like, it for the fight. They do. They really do, but... Fortification, they've got enough time. Seven seconds until Envy's up, and OG... They're not going to give Secret the opportunity to fight. They take the tower and they back out. They can move to other objectives. That last remaining out of tower, that bottom lane is already going to cause enough problems for Team Secret. That's like three waves coming their way. And I think the next big item to look out for for Secret, apart from Envy's, has got to be a refresher orb on Weeha. They need these double Sonic Waves, double Shiva's Guard damage, double Orchid as well. If he can time that so he can Orchid both the Dazzle and the Wyvern, ah, oh, Dazzle can remove his own with the Guardian Greaves, so maybe not that useful. They still kind of need it's Poppy to do difficult. that work, but Poppy's got no maneuverability items either. Uh, you look you look at this Bane 52 minutes into the game, you've got Tranquil's Wand, a Null, and a Medallion. This is all Poppy's got. He has been so so ripped apart, net worth-wise. He's only got 4.6k in 52 minutes. But he's had no choice. They've had to pump more money and more value into their other cores. As OG now wait for the perfect time to pounce. Eternal Envy, Hookshot Moon. Tries once again, Misery. Gonna get the amplification off, but you'll have to we'll dispel that. And OG just dragged the creep waves over. That's a nice little steal to come the way of the Rubik. Pilot Eye now with Acid Spray, making it even more difficult for OG to get up and into the Team Secret base. And something interesting to see about the way OG played these two supports as well is we, we're talking a lot. Oh wait, maybe it's not time uh, for that right now. Yeah, uh, application just goes on no tell with the with the uh, enfeebled as well. He deals very little damage, but he's still chipping away at the melee ranks. And Secret do not want to initiate. They understand that Moon can hook shot. Hilarious enough, Moon is blocked by almost everything. Now he moves into a better position for a hook. 
You and Feeble. They're, they're just baiting. They're baiting with the Aegis Satanic Hero. This Satanic is not going to heal that much when you're enfeebled, but... Slow and steady. No tell will be bringing down the tower, and Secret has to start making some sort of play. They've bought something on NB. What is it? He's sending the courier. It's the MKB. He's going to go all in. He'll buy up, not have buyback. That and I gonna, think it's the right choice. It has to reach its destination. Time. Like, it's going to go around the creep wave that's up there. And by the time that happens, they've already lost their mid racks. The top lane will come next, and there it is the Four Monkey King bar on the courier. There's OG now moved to the top lane. Courier. How good are you? Can you get back home safe? Hug the wall, hug the wall. There it is, it's back. So the Monkey King bar is up. And this is it from Secret. There's no hiding inside the fountain this time around. They have to defend against OG. And the initiation starts over on Notel. But Envy copping a lot of damage already. The double ice sprays down, one from Rubik, one from the Alchemist. And without that Lincoln Spear, Slark feeling very, very fragile. This Weehaw's able to push out. He actually picked up a Mjolnir. Uh, uh, sorry, a Maelstrom. To try and just counter push this OG lineup. Secret needs to find an initiation angle. Here That's not straight from the front, I think. They go on no tail. The mini bashes are kicking in. Remember, he's still got the Aegis, the Immortal. And then he keeps having this Lincoln Spear triggered. OG just waiting this time out. They've still got another 50 seconds left on the Aegis. Big problem for Secret here is that they don't have a smoke. They There's would a love jump. to flank, but they can't. Leech again. They keep going for the bounce for the stuns. Eternal Envy. He actually keeps these stuns going, but no tell. He's happy if the egg is popped at this point. It wasn't a heavy committal coming out from Team Secret, but with the curse, they actually trap the slugs and four staff try to push him around. We have from behind the Sonic Wave. Crit can't get the second curse off, and with the extra attack from Misery, he's keeping Fly out of this battle. And Envy, he can attack directly to the Gyrocopter. No tail. He's down. He can't live. Misery with the double crush keeps Fly as well as Moon here for the moment. That Alchemist though, he's the bigger target. His nightmare up. Goes for the concoction. Envy still got his Lincoln Spear up, and We Hollow grab the double kill. It's still a heavy amount of damage that's been done to the secret base. They've lost mid, they've lost bottom, but they've shown they can fight against OG. But is the damage too extensive? So important in that that it lasts as long as it does. Envy, with these two minute steals on Essence Shift, ends up the fight with a bonus 100 agility. No wonder he's able to kill off the gyro at the end. And you said no till was happy to give away the Aegis. I don't think he was considering how much damage he was giving over to Envy. You might be right. And now OG. Like, there's no Alchemist and no Gyre for 50 seconds. This is a perfect time for Team Secret to regain control of this map. Weeha, the Maelstrom's even looking better for him now. Forcing out the lanes, having something where he can do that. You're getting more survivability on Pine Light Eye. This guy's walking around with Assange. He's already got the four star, but he's looking for more survivability. With 2.6k gold, also on the Rubik after that engagement. What else are we looking for? Envy, he's up to 2.8k. Slider has his full BKB with extra money, so the buybacks are available with a 20 gold surplus. Finally, Puffy buys a new item. He has a solar crest. He has something of real value for Team Secret. That's really good against the Dire lineup. They don't have any MKBs on either core, and this keeps Slark alive. And I want to point out how crazy that fight actually was for Secret. For Eternal Envy to be cool enough to stay there, and bait the whole enemy team in. If he dies, it's over. So he has to play it on the edge, but they executed it so that Envy was floating around 20% health, got out of the fight, stole a lot of agility, came back in, and key cooldowns for OG had been used already. Mainly the first Winter's Curse. Of course, the Shallow Grave as well. Now with this BKB timing getting even lower, like Parlay can sit in the back lines and then just kick in. In fact, without a BKB on the Alchemist, he can just disarm the Alchemist when he runs forward because he's got a Heaven's Halbert now fully completed on the Rubik. That's a very big item too. Keeps him alive even longer in the fights. He's getting good steals. And we're starting to see the problem as well of a Wyvern going in for the Refresher Orb. There's not a lot of life over on Crit. So the control time that uh, Secret need to kill him off isn't really that much. And they keep putting a lot of, a lot of uh, effort into making sure that Fly has no influence in these engagements. Pilot Eye, what are you going to get? Acid Spray? Oh, that's a good steal. He doesn't want to drive the Creep Wave up here, though. It's going to reveal his entire team, and the fact the Creep Wave will probably lose aggro now, not getting up the hill. That Monkey King bar is now going to be done as well for Notel. He's got buyback, but he kind of needs the damage. 
This is a very, very important moment. Envy, it feels like he just bought that MKB. It, he also did. Yes. <laughs> and he has 4,600 gold to boot after that fight and the tower he took bottom and the couple of creep waves he found. 480 CS leading by a big margin in terms of that. He's gonna have to get rid of his Shadow Blade if he wants something else. Like, in, unless he thinks that Silver Red is a good late game, but, late game item. And in fact, he just buys a straight Moonshot. Doesn't want to give up anything else, just increase that attack speed. Misery yep. oh, breaks the smoke. He came in, the curse will come out from crit. The Misery, he's still got the BKB available, the four star from Pardai. Him out by a miracle. Okay, that's a lot of damage. And Puppy, he TP's out in time, though the curse from crit will be used. They find Puppy Yules and controlling him in the air, but Envy comes into the engagement, going on to Miracle. How much damage have they got? Maybe with Weehar here, it could be a hell of a lot more. Miracle, no tell on the front lines. There goes Fly. There's no extra damage. And now Puppy, even with a beam script, he can't crit out of the engagement. No tell and Moon keep fighting. They're the last two plays are left right for OG as Weehar dodges the Hulk shot. But Envy, he's here for blood and wants no tells they've got him and with a crush moon has controlled the blade melt time will almost be completely expended and envy he's got 30 solid essence and he'll use it to kill off moon moon wants to hook himself away can't do it og they are white but team secret still have problems at home the tier 4 towers are under siege they still have super creeps in the mid and the bot lane but still a big big fight for secret to win yeah it's it's one of those games where even though OG have two lanes of Rex down, this guy who's gonna die right now is the game decider. I don't think OG can win the game anymore without an Aegis, especially not if Secret have one. Eternal Envy is reaching the point where, you know, he's... We're talking about all the damage he gets from the Essence Shift. It also gives armor. He's just tanking up so much in these fights. Right now he's sitting on 28 base armor. They can't kill him fast enough. Their heroes simply aren't built to deal that amount of damage. They have no Daedalus. They have no heavy single target damage from the Alchemist anymore against all of this armor and of course the solar crest that puppy can put on him and the enfeeble between all of those things he can't do it and this is the reason why secret make the choice to put the cheese over on the slant so he's got that burst heal and allows misery to be even more aggressive to have that aegis to the immortal oh gee now this the, is the bigger... one without buyback so he needs it that's true and so oh gee who do you even initiate on you're having trouble killing off the slark. Puppy's getting in position where he's able to get his disables off and these fights are becoming very, very scrappy for OG. Fly can't really find the back lines. Okay, Envy, that's a uh, walk under a tier three tower just saying hidey duty. I doubt that's what he said. Yeah, he would never use those words. No one would. <laughs> Thanks, Send. <laughs> Twit. <laughs> Some good wards still available for the Dire, so they're getting information. Oh, shot. shot! They found a Pylite Dire, he's going to do his own 4 over the cogs, and the rest of the team of OG can't chase it. They've got the concoction prepping, but Miracle can't reach him, and they actually lose their clockwork. Moon goes too deep, and Miracle, he just has to sit and wait, and now he's getting fingers gripped up on the Gyrocopter! There's no support! Fly will get the Shallow Grave off, allowing Miracle to fight a little bit longer, but it's not long enough! No when Weehar kicks in! Moon will go for another hook shot, but what damage has he got? There's no more control! Weehar, he's damaging! The fly is way too much. Envy, he does go down. 99 seconds to the sideline, but buyback will be committed. They're trying to get four. But Moon, he's on the back of Weeha. Four staff down from Pi, trying to buy space. The Yule Step are up, but Queen of Pain is the blink of Babel. The Cogs don't get the burn, and now Weeha wants to fight. Moon locks in control, but he don't have enough damage to kill him off. Pi like die. How's he survived so much during these fights? The hook shot off target. Weeha retreating out, TPing back to base. As this is becoming very tense, we've gone over the one hour mark here in game two of the grand final. Then no team wants to make any mistakes. And that was triple buyback from OG. Clockwork, Alchemist, Dazzle. They forced out the one from Envy, which I actually don't think he needed to use. They they were in a position that where they disengaged, but in those kind of fights, like in this late game, you just you go with your gut instinct yeah. and you have to immediately. You don't have time to think. He, w he had a feeling the fight was going to extend and that he would get back in. And maybe the buyback prevented OG from actually chasing down extra kills. But now, this next fight is the game if it happens within the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. How long have we got? There's no Aegis and no Cheese, though. So OG actually did get a pretty good trade out of that after all. Not using the Refresher on Wyvern either. They have all their tools available again. They do. And they could, oh, then again, can they force it? And do they need to force it? There's still two lanes of Braxes up. Is this almost the time where you look towards the BTs? Get Alchemist in with that and just 
push out the side lanes. You lose the game if you get mega creeps and your cores die for OG. Then Secret will run down mid and take. Just skip the barracks, go straight for tier 4s and throne. Two minutes is more than enough after a long team fight with a billion agility on your Slark. That's true. So you got to be very careful. I don't think Brute Force is the way to go. I think OG, as much as it is probably pretty scary at this point, they have to play map control for another up to 10 minutes and get that Roshan. Secret. Seem to have got an edge over the last couple of fights. It's like they've figured out how to find the right assault angles into the fights. Mm -hmm. And Slark has got enough items that it works. I'm wondering if this is now going to be Moon's way of like giving his team another chance. If he can complete up a Bloodstone, trigger it during the fight, and just give that extra life back to OG. I don't feel ever completed. He's just got the Soul Booster at the moment. And MV, oh, this is not where you want to go with the Shadow Blade. He's going to come underneath the Observer and Sentry was. They can see him clearly. Link can feel a trigger against the PKB off as well as the Oldie attacking in the clockwork. Gets the bash. The Hookshot won't get him. He's a miracle catching Weeha. And with the curse, two minutes on the sideline. Buyback is available. The pilot eyes on the run. The homing missile chasing him. But oh! Miracle! Just numbed all over him. The buyback comes out from Weeha now. He needs to stop this momentum on the bottom lane, but OG can reach it, but he's so scared to come out. And this time around, the positional advantage was for OG. Weeha couldn't find an angle. He blinked into the middle of the OG team and just got killed by Alchemist, getting absolutely nothing off. And that crucial mistake just forced Secret to try to disengage, but Alchemist ran down Envy. This game is over. It really feels like it without this luck. Team Secret just lacking the firepower to repel OG. Misery trying to get around the back. They got the Nightmare, keeping Miracle out. We hard blinks forward, but now Curse starts controlling Misery as well. Gyrocop to finally free his Fiend script. He can let the call down go. The BKB trigger from Secret. They need space, they need time, they need another hope, but it doesn't really exist. They've lost too many heroes. Secret, GG and OG. The dream is one game away. They are 2-0 against Team Secret in this best of five final to run through the entire lower bracket it was even rough in the group you could have said they could have come through into the upper bracket but they were bumped down and now staring down three championship game opportunities